met somebody recently about six months back um, who's in the mobile business and he told me that he has an inventory of one billion and he's looking at scaling it up to 2.2 billion in the next three months. It just shocked me out of my skull. And the reality is, yes, there is a whole lot of inventory available on mobile and what are people doing and how effectively are they using that inventory here. We all know, you know, 72 million VAP users in the country how do we effectively engage with them? Do we even think about that segment when we are planning our communication outlay? You know, we're talking about, you know, somebody spoke about it where they said, figure out what you absolutely need and then put everything behind it. I think it was in the morning presentation. The whole idea is about saying there are consumers, there are consumers connected. How do you look at them? Who are the right partners to go out to, to engage with, to reach out to those customers? The last part of the language web, you know, this is something that's been very passionate to me. I tried doing this uh, a couple of times in the past. It was not very successful. But the reality is India is about 200 million English-speaking population. What do you do beyond that? You know, you already have 100 million, you know, going by different counts, 100 million plus online users. Very soon you're going to see the next number. And what do you do beyond that? You know, majority of Indians online are coming online through their mobile devices, not necessarily everybody knows, read, and can understand English very well. How can you take advantage of the English language? In, the, in that scale, you know, English, um, Hindi is not put because it goes out of the chart, it's about 500 million. How can you start engaging with, with language? You know, I think there's a huge, huge opportunity for brands to engage with consumers on language. And how could you effectively use that through mobile and languages? Point number three, you know, the reality is a lot of times when we are planning, you know, any form of communication, we're only saying, oh, where are we buying media? The reality is it's moved. It's not just one type of media. It's moved from one media to three types of media. It's about own media. Own media, you know, each of you who's who are running a, a brand website should also realize that you're, you are a media channel. That's your own media. Running a Facebook page, that is your media in, in certain senses. What are you doing there? You know, how do you use all these things together, in effect, to deliver what your main brand objectives are? So in simply, you know, that other point that I won't make, you know, a lot of people have spoken about it. There's earned media, there's paid media. Paid media is what you would pay. You know, I actually wanted to animate these circles, but I didn't have enough time. But the idea is your paid media could be large as you start your brand campaign, but over a period of time, if you map it, the paid media should go as small as possible and your whole story should evolve around earn media and own media, and then come back into the next campaign. How do you pick that and go to the next level? Four, it's about, you know, evaluate where your online property stacks up, which is the most important thing, right? Um, all of us want to be in the digital world. We want to create, you know, online site. We want to do a whole lot of stuff, but the fact is, you know, do you all know as owned media, you know, as I said, owned media in the previous slide, where do we stack up? Where are we in, in this whole engagement of digital with users today? There are multiple things that you can actually look up, even if you don't have an online property. You know, if you have an online property, you can look at Chromescore, you could look at, you know, tools from Google. If you look at search of volumes on, on queries, you know, it gives you a fair idea of what's happening around your brand, what are people asking, you know? How do you compare with your competitor? How do you compare with the leader? And if you take all the data metrics and map it with real world data, you'd actually see a lot of gaps. And in reality, if all these gaps are, um, if, if all your data is very similar to how your offline world data is, I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic state to be. But otherwise, it, it's super important for you to analyze where you stand, you know? Apart from other things, social listening. Listening is, is one important thing. You know, I know a lot of companies are out there listening and doing a whole lot of stuff. Listening is not just about saying, you know, okay, I can hear people talking, but about, more about saying, what are they saying and how do I take that conversation to the next level? What can I do with these conversations? <coughs> so, the last part which you know, not many people give too much of, um, um, of importance to is about saying, you know, I, ha I get this question, you know, pretty often than not. Why is your hosting more expensive than anyone else was put up? We've given you hosting data. 
the reality is it's about saying what quality of hosting are you buying how effective is that bit that you're buying ad serving right why ad serving is important because at the end of the day if you're running a digital campaign you want to be in control of what's happening you want to know where people are what's happening to your campaign how much you have spent there are tools available today the reality is i know there are lots of people friendly faces in the crowd who 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 um who who work on different segments you know most of these tools are available it's about saying how do you make advantage of all these tools put it together and then create your larger story so that you have a complete set of data in front of you to analyze and say this is where we are this is where we want to go cross media integration i think this is one of the most important things because um, you know in my um, i'll run fast on this but the reality is you know for me a lot of times digital comes as the last leg you know you have one week for the campaign to break all the digital guys give them the sand just run it really doesn't work it's worth saying how can you take your offline experiences and integrate it with your online experience it's worth saying when a guy you know i uh, i saw a couple of posts on um, on facebook and twitter a couple of days back where they said samsung has advertised for smart tv you know huge advertising in times of india but when when he went online videocon was advertising for smart tv you know there was not a single mention of samsung so the reality is people actually start a lot of people start their experiences with search and how can you be right up there when you're actually using offline media effectively how do you bring that to online and next <coughs> you know i spoke about hosting you know it's not just a microsite it's your own property you know it it's about saying don't just measure you know how many users came what visitors what they did and went away but if you are actually managing a brand page it's about saying how do you take the user through a series of experiences you know how do you derive business insight from it how do you take the customer engagement to the next level and the last point is about you know you know because i come from an agency um I like to talk in in many senses but ask your agency for tough questions you know they have all the data you know they give you only data um, limited data because you know they don't want to be questioned ask your agency push them because you know one of one of the things oh, my time is up <laughs> we go back to the question but ask your agency they have a lot of data you know data in terms of saying pre campaign what was my state post campaign what's my state and where are we heading thanks